This seems to be a recurring pattern every two years. Let's talk today about Edmonton Oilers defenseman Philip Broberg and what exactly has happened to this guy ever since getting drafted in the 2019 draft. You see, the reason I started out the video like this is because four years ago when he was initially drafted, there were a few interview segments where you saw Philip Broberg talk about his game and it was a very particular set of comments that he had made that stood out the most. The one here on the YouTube video on TSN's YouTube channel talks about how Philip Broberg compares himself to Victor Hedman. And in fact, when it comes to that Hedman comparison, it wasn't until two years later that you actually saw Victor Hedman himself make a comparison between Philip Broberg's young game and his own. This is an idea that we would talk about once in a while, and that was actually the video that we made two years ago, saying, yeah, Victor Hedman said this, he said that Broberg could be the next him, and like, it's kind of difficult to go out there and really believe it for anybody who is not Victor Hedman. But when it comes to this player right here, Philip Broberg, I wanted to go over some of the development he's gone through so far, what exactly we could see coming up for him next season, and just how weird everything has gone. Because Broberg, back when he was drafted in the 2019 draft, was taken 8th overall by the Oilers. It was a pick that was seen as kind of controversial, because you had some really talented players still available up on the board. The guy that got taken after was Anaheim Ducks future superstar Trevor Zegers. As you went further down, you saw other Swedish defensemen like Victor Soderstrom go. You had Cole Caulfield get taken 15th overall. Matt Boldy was taken by Minnesota. And so there were some really good NHL players to be that were taken immediately after Broberg. And for Broberg in particular, there was a skill set that made us understand why he was taken so high, but there were a lot of risks to his game as well that made the decision a bit of a difficult one to swallow, for a lot of Oilers fans at least. This is because back in Broberg's draft season, he didn't have too many points. He played with the AIK team and the Allsvenskan had 9 points, 41 games played. However, where Broberg really made his bread and butter in this draft season was at the Hlinka Gretzky Cup earlier in the summer. He had 4 points in 5 games in this tournament, 3 goals, 1 assist, and while that doesn't stand out as super amazing, what Broberg did at this tournament was nothing short of spectacular. What made Broberg stand out was his absolutely stellar mobility. The guy could skate like the wind. He was one of the best skaters in the 2019 draft period. Just the ability for Broberg to pick the puck up in his own zone and just blitz by everybody, stick handle the puck through traffic, find himself into the neutral and offensive zone, and carry the offense through his shaft. Yeah, I shouldn't say it like that. That sounds really bad. Just allow the offense to flow through him because of his mobility and his skills, this really made him stand out on the map. And when it came to the skill set, I mean, he's a big guy, 6'3", 198, left-handed guy, Swedish defenseman who skates pretty well. There's a reason why Broberg himself was comparing his game to Victor Hedman. Hedman himself would say similar things a few years later, so there was an easy enough draw to make here when it comes to what made Broberg a valuable piece. It's just... In the Allsvenskan, you didn't see nearly that same level of dominance. You wouldn't see Broberg taking the puck end-to-end. -end. You wouldn't see the offense really come to life. And in fact, you saw a lot more negatives out of Broberg's game in the regular season play that he exhibited when he was away from the international tournament scene playing with other 18-year-olds. Broberg would display improper decision making, his defensive IQ wasn't amazing, there were so many scouts going out there saying, yeah, this guy has the tools, he's got the physical frame, but he does not have the toolbox. He just doesn't have the proper decision making at this time to really project to being a top line player. Sure, from the talent that he has, from the offensive skill, from the playmaking, from the skating, this guy could be a number one if he just gets it together between his ears and behind his eyes. And so as the years went on, after Broberg got drafted, he had eventually spent some more time bouncing around in the SHL. There was an entire year's worth of development he had in North America taken away because of the pandemic. He stuck around with the Skeleftia AIK team for probably a bit too long. And by the time he made his way over to the Oilers, things were starting to clog themselves up a bit. Sure, he had 23 points in 31 Bakersfield Condors games in 21-22. That's great. Even this season, 4 points in 7 Bakersfield games, not bad at all. 
This season, though, he had 8 points in 46 regular Edmonton Oilers games. And with the way this team is assembled, where you already have other defenders like Matthias Ekholm and Brett Kulak already there on your left side, not to mention Darnell Nurse... There, all of a sudden, is a much more difficult path for Philip Broberg to be, firstly, getting proper ice time on the left side, and secondly, to be developing as a result of that. They already tried the Broberg on the right side experiment a little bit this previous season, and for a guy whose hockey IQ already wasn't the best, it wasn't a good choice putting him on the right just because his entire hockey life he's adapted to playing on the left side, so changing it all up has been a little bit of a challenge for him. But with these other players already on the depth chart, you're gonna have to ask, where does Philip Broberg go from here? Because the deployment, the development, it just doesn't really fit, and it doesn't really give him a proper environment to grow. Furthermore, you have yourselves the status of the Oilers in general. A few weeks ago, we made a video talking about the Alex Newhook thing with Montreal and Colorado and how, for Newhook, you could debate that there's a bigger opportunity for him in Montreal because Montreal is not a Stanley Cup contending team like Colorado is. If you're in Colorado, there is no room for error. If you make a mistake, you're going to be punished for it and you're going to be replaced. In Montreal, you're allowed to make mistakes, you're allowed to go out there and grow, 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 go through some growing pains, and for Philip Broberg, you could make the argument that because he's on Edmonton, which is a team that is supposed to be a cup contender anyway, there isn't really that same leeway. There is, okay, if you make a mistake, we're going to play you on the fourth line, we're going to play you on the seventh pairing, you're not going to get much ice time because we're going to go with somebody instead who knows how to play and who gives us the best chance to win. Sorry, but we're prioritizing our team's immediate success rather than your development at this moment in time. And so, it's going to be very intriguing to see what happens with Broberg as everything goes along. We had already made a few videos talking about a few other Oilers D-men potentially getting offer sheets, etc. Broberg right now is expiring at the end of 2024, making $800,000, so we'll see where he goes from here on out next year, I guess. But right now, this 22-year-old left-handed defenseman is in a very strange spot. Can he still skate like the wind? Yes, he can. He absolutely can. He's got the mobility. He's got the puck skills. He's got a lot going for him. He's got the frame. It's just he needs to really find his stride in the National Hockey League. Even if he doesn't go out there and start dominating the entire offensive zone like he did in the Hlinka Gretzky tournament four years ago now, there still is a great opportunity for this guy to eventually become an NHL stud. If he gets his decision-making on point, then he could be a top-four defenseman who logs minutes, who carries the puck up ice, and who does everything Darnell Nurse is capable of doing, maybe just minus all the physicality and the hits, because... If Broberg becomes that Victor Hedman 2.0, firstly, Victor Hedman is an unattainably high ceiling in my opinion, like that guy is a multiple Norris winner, he's one of the best defensemen we have seen in the NHL the past few decades, Broberg comparing himself to Hedman, even Hedman comparing Broberg to Hedman seems like a little bit of a tall stretch, but if he's able to form some sort of that Victor Hedman light type of role, if he's able to really carry the game through his offense, make a lot better reads in his own zone, make his teammates' lives easier with his decision-making in front of his goalie, then okay, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. It's been a few years and we haven't seen that, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. It's just going to be really difficult to do that when you're playing behind a whole bunch of other defensemen that have already solidified their games to the point where you know how good Ekholm is. You know how good of a shutdown guy Brett Kulak is, even if he doesn't produce any points. You know what Darnell Nurse is all about. The Oilers have multiple choices with where they want to go with Broberg and his development. Because at the end of the day, if you wanted to get that top defenseman that you thought you were getting back in 2018-19... It's tough to say that the way his development has gone has been the proper way to achieve that. So if you're an Oilers fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the way Philip Broberg has been developed so far? How do you feel about the comparisons to Victor Hedman? How do you feel his season next year is going to go? Where do you think he plays in the lineup? Do you want to force him onto that right side because there are already too many left-handed guys taking up spots on this team? Or do you just suck it up and say, all right, well, we'll play him more than this guy. Or we'll give him higher ice time than this other guy. Let me in your thoughts in the comment section below, what do you think is the most appropriate way for Broberg to develop from here on out? How do you think the ceiling is going to be for Broberg as he continues down this path? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.